So I'm going to look in this video at a fairly commonly asked question and quite a tough one within DEER. So this relates to importing in open purchase orders and open sales orders. So generally this will only be done when you first start using the system. Uh, after your initial stock take, you place any orders in which are currently open. In other words, the stock movement has not happened yet. So for purchase orders, that's a purchase order that hasn't been received into the warehouse yet in full and for sales orders it will be orders that customers have placed but you haven't shipped out yet ideally we would recommend for you do your opening stock take you clear as much as possible get as many orders out of your old system um, and obviously receive as much as possible into the warehouse but that's more uh, from your suppliers end it's sometimes difficult to uh, get back quicker once that's done, our general recommendation is for clients to manually key in their open orders. So either sales and then simple or advanced sale, depending on the type and purchase and the same options. Reason for this being the import can be a little bit cumbersome because there's so much information required and it's good muscle memory to learn uh, using the sales and using the purchases. That said, um, if you, your Excel or spreadsheet proficient and uh, you have quite a few orders to go in uh, you certainly can import those in so if we look at sales here I'll hover over sales and go to all sales uh, you'll see there's an import button just here um, I would recommend if you've got a sale or two in the system maybe if you've done a test sale or similar um, I would recommend exporting one out first so what I'm going to do here is just take this order here and export to CSV format. If you don't have one in the system, I would still recommend you add a sale manually, maybe the first one that you want to import and then do an export out just so that you get an idea of what goes into every single column. Uh, if you click import, there's then two other things that are very useful here. So if you go to the sale tasks tab, there's a completely blank CSV file. That's why I recommend it as well to download an example one because the blank file has a lot of columns. And there's a manual here as well if you need to have a look at that. So what I'm going to do is just pause the recording for a moment and just load both of these CSVs up. Okay, so this is the blank spreadsheet. Um, now the asterisk tabs highlight those fields that are required. From initial viewing here, you may feel it looks relatively obvious what is required. So uh, a customer name, an order number, uh, product code, quantity and price, total and similar. However, there's a lot more columns all the way along and some of them have some quite specific rules. All of this is in the sales order or purchase order import PDF, which we recommend to read before you attempt to anything here. If you look at the example we exported, you'll start to see the logic and also why we recommend exporting it. So, so there is a record type and there are record lines. So for every order you want to put in the system, there should be uh, both here. So there should be a header information and then there should be the line information. Just note that this record type could also be called order and order lines rather than invoice and invoice lines, um, if you wish. So the header line has a customer name, an invoice number, the reference. It doesn't have any of the product information or similar. Then as we go along, it's got all of the customer contact details, the price tiers, the stock location. Now, all of these must match information within DEER. So if you put a warehouse in that doesn't exist, that will cause you an error and similar. All the way along, and the custom fields are only required in uh, unique cases. So there's then invoice lines. They have the products in them, the quantities, the prices, total value. All of this has to match as well. So uh, the total has to match. So here we have a price discount, a uh, quantity, a total amount. All of that has to match up and work together. So if you want to import orders into the system, I would suggest starting with a file like this. Um, obviously, you can then put more records underneath. So I can copy these if I want to. 
And uh, let's say that I've got another order that I want to put in the system. I'm just going to gray this out just for ease of use. Um, so here, uh, imported order. Um, and I'll give it a different number here. Uh, the invoice numbering obviously needs to be unique. Um, I'll leave the product here, but what I'll maybe do is I'll just take the discount off. Tax will be 2.5. Um, that's all fine. And I'll put, um, I'll leave it to Bob the Builder just to keep it nice and simple. Um, and what I'll show you first of all is just an example. So I'll put a stock location in that doesn't exist, just as an example. Uh, I'll remove these and download the CSV. Go back into the DEA import. Now there's some options here. So uh, if you want the orders imported to be pick packed or shipped, you can select that here. Generally for opening orders, you won't want that because that's the whole point of bringing the opening orders in. Uh, whether you want the invoice drafted or authorized, uh, whether you want to fire back orders on this stock or not, generally you don't. And whether you want these orders to go out to zero, which this is quite a technical one and probably not something I can advise on a general video. Um, broadly speaking, if you've already been using zero, you don't want that because the files are already in there. Generally, if you're moving to zero, you do want that, but that's definitely something you should get advice on. Drag that CSV in. And you'll see it will go through just a validation here and you'll see two lines found and one of the combinations has an error um, you'll see up here it tells you that there's an error if you click on the little icon unknown stock location so you just click on the little um, option here so that's told me that i've got a stock location that doesn't exist in the system i'll go and correct this and now i'll make an error uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll go and just add another line and I will I'll just go and find a product just quickly, uh, product code. So I'll add two lines and I'll make a problem with one of the lines just to show what that can look like. Um, so if you give me a moment. So um, we have, um, let's use the case so gbc let's say we've got one of these at five dollars fifty cents tax and the total is four dollars so that doesn't match up and i'll show you what happens here because it's quite an important one so back to the import uh drag the csv file in again this time you'll see three lines found which is correct Click here, and there's an invalid total. So the system's expecting the total to be five dollars. It was actually four dollars here. So one product at five dollars, totaling four. Correct that, and export, and that should now go in perfectly. Obviously, this one was fairly easy because I copied it from an existing order. So that's now been imported successfully. If we go into the sales order. We'll see here reference import example uh, it does use the next order in the system but obviously if we type the original code we will find it uh, the total amount here and then if we click in the order lines we'll have one of those cases and five of the bottle caps in there Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it is one of the more convoluted areas of the system because there's so much going on and therefore essentially all these fields of information need to be filled out on the import. Um, if you do have any queries, we're happy to have contact. Um, if you're an existing client or if you're a new client that's interested in taking on our services, um, as I mentioned, it is one of the more uh, involved areas of the system that does need some uh, spreadsheet expertise as well. But hopefully that's demystified a little part of it.